Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Fedora Linux 37. And it's so good that even Glorious Eggroll based his project, Nabara project, for a gaming optimized distro uh, based on Fedora. So without further ado, let's quickly jump right in. Okay, so this is the welcome screen. This is what you get after installing Fedora Linux 37. I have it installed on my VM again. Sorry for that. But let's quickly go ahead and start setup. So as you can see, it asks for location services and automatic problem reporting. I'm not going to bother with any of these uh, third party repositories. You will want to enable this option. It's pretty handy and connect your online accounts. I'm not going to bother with this. You can also type your full name and username. Let's see. Okay, that's pretty great. Password. Again, the age-old joke of having a super strong password. All done. Start using Fedora Linux. Let's go ahead and take the tour. Uh, let's see if anything really changed in this uh, welcome dialog for GNOME. Start the tour. Workstation Edition pre-release. As you can see, beta software. Get an overview, press the super key to see windows and apps. So there you are. Just type the search so you can press super and you can say, for example, terminal and it'll, it'll come up or I don't know, let's say something games. So whatever is there, it's going to appear. Keep on top with workspaces. So again, you can switch to super and you have your workspaces. Uh, this being a VM, you'll not see the animations, but actually it looks pretty great. And, and this being Wayland, you can actually control it with your touchpad if you're if you're using a laptop. So that's pretty neat, actually. Yeah, see up and down for overview on a trackpad and side to side for switching workspaces. So that's it for the welcome dialog box. We can finally start using Fedora Linux 37. So as we all know, Fedora Linux 37, I just said in the intro that it's a great distribution and updates very fast once in six months. It also has support for, I believe, uh, more than nine months and you can actually get a total of 13 months before you update or upgrade to the next uh, Fedora release. And this is also very stable. We have a new wallpaper, as you can see. Well, obviously, there's going to be quirks if you're using a semi-bleeding edge distro. But if you wait it out for a little while, most of the problems, they usually go away. And well, if you don't want to be here, then maybe you can use something like Pop! OS that's uh, op more optimized for gaming or you can use Nabara Project. Anyway, let's quickly dive into our desktop. So as you can see, we have the activities button in the left. And this is the default workspaces view with the dock at the bottom, which I absolutely prefer. It's a little too big for my size, but I love it. This is the show applications button. So here we are with all the applications and here are your workspaces. So you can click on one of them and it'll switch to it. In the middle, we got the calendar slash notification bar. So here we can enable do not disturb. We can clear notifications. We can also view our world clocks, weather and events. Now, this is where one of the biggest changes are. So as you can see, this is pill shaped. Uh, this was not in GNOME 42. This is actually a pretty, pretty good improvement and looks fantastic. Now, what you can do here is you can actually directly click on these to change the mode. And as you can see, Fedora ships with a brilliant wallpaper that turns to dark. So it has two versions, a light mode version and a dark mode version. So we're going to play around with the dark mode later. But as you can see, you can tap on any one of these to change. Uh, you can you can enable night light or disable it. But if you click on this tiny little arrow, it'll actually drop down to allow you to access more settings. So for example, if I click on the power button, as you can see, we have a a tiny little box which has more options regarding it. Then we click settings. We can obviously jump into settings. So first order of business, let's go to about like we do every time. And as you can see, beautiful Fedora. Uh, this is a VM. So yeah, as you can see, my computer is pretty, pretty weak and we're using Wayland because why not? 
So let's go back to light mode for a minute and we'll switch back and see how different things, different apps look. Let's go over to appearance and as you can see, we have a very healthy collection of wallpapers over here. Uh, these are two, so that means that they will change based on whether you have light mode or dark mode going on. Uh, let's change the wallpaper for the sake of this video. Let's, uh, let's click on this and see what it is. Mm, it actually looks pretty good. Moving on, let's go to the file manager and let's see what kind of updates are there. So this is the new file manager written in libidvita slash gtk4. I love these blue icons. I said it last time. These are actually pretty great. Now, one thing is new is if you start to squish it, actually the sidebar disappears, which is actually pretty great. And you can bring it up using this button. So that's pretty handy. Or if you just leave it at the normal stage, it'll appear after a certain threshold. That is pretty, pretty good. You also have other views. You can change them and you have other options for how you want to sort. And there is also a new dialog box for the about section. Now this IMO looks pretty good, pretty modern. It's in line with the with the with the appearance of the rest of the operating system or the desktop environment i suppose and you can also go to their website report an issue you can do some troubleshooting credits legal the standard affair now another thing is if we right click on any disk or any usb drive we have the option to format it so this wasn't actually there this is actually one of the new features in gnome 43 so that is actually very very handy you can modify your permissions and as we can see this card layout actually looks pretty pretty sweet another new thing is uh in fedora linux 36 we got introduced to a new terminal which is the console so when we right click on any folder or file we can right click and we can directly open it in terminal so as you can see Hopefully this is console and not the old terminal. Well, okay, it's still the old terminal. Hmm. Anywho, well, actually, I believe if we were to check out GNOME 43, the nightly version, we would have gotten to see console instead of the GNOME terminal, but it's fair. I mean, it's a terminal, it works. And if you want to use a newer terminal, you can always install the console. So it's not a big issue. Okay. Now let's move on to some of the calendar refinements that the GNOME team has had. So let's open calendar. And well, at first glance, it looks pretty good. So what they have done is actually they have now brought over a sidebar with a date picker and you can also have a list of agenda. Now, additionally, the app now also neatly compacts at smaller widths. So if I drag it down and if I try to squish it as you can see the extra information is hidden and after a certain threshold it starts to appear again that's pretty neat so now that we've got a pretty good handle on how GNOME 43 looks and feels let's go over to the software center software center is actually one of the better places in this in this desktop environment so you got your updates you got your installed whatever's installed in here and you have explore now i believe for some reason other things are not showing up in here but maybe they should have so you got your standard affair in here create socialize learn develop and uh i'm not sure why but this should have been populated with other things it actually looks pretty good if you check my last video on linux 36 fedora linux 36 that would have been the case but Anyway, uh, let's give it a try. Let's close it and uh, let's try to run it again. Nope, it's still the same. Okay, not quite sure what happened there. Maybe this is because of it's a maybe this is because it's a beta software, or maybe something else. So now, apart from this, there are also other minor changes, which include an app launcher, which now displays the pagination arrows. So. Well, if I were to have more apps, I would have probably gotten an arrow somewhere around here. We have uh, composite emoji support in characters. We have an experimental web extension support in Epiphany. And we also have an improved web app management in Epiphany. 
We obviously have GNOME Shell performance tweaks and faster processing of directory renames and tracker. Not to mention the new assortment of wallpapers that we got. So another thing that I wanted to really check out is I want to check out how files looks in dark mode. So let's quickly switch over to dark mode and check out some of the apps that we have. And well, I can say the wallpaper looks absolutely amazing, maybe better than what it did in light mode. So here's files. Again, looks pretty darn good. Now let's open a few of the apps and let's see. So let's say we got boxes or maybe system monitor for this video. Yeah, dark mode, man. The way these pop, it looks absolutely amazing. People got to love this, right? You got the rounded corners. You got the rounded corners at the bottom too. It is just so symmetrical. Well, except for the apps that are old, uh, like GNOME Terminal that, is, that have not been updated. But apart from that, it's actually, actually pretty good. Anyway, that's been it for me. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a, it's been a long video and it was, it was great to be back after a long time. So with that being said, peace.